Today, we will chat with Premier Danielle Smith on the one-year anniversary of her government. Big news for the City of Calgary as a deal for the new event centre has been finalized. We'll chat with Minister of Transportation and Economic Corridors, that is Devin Drieschen, on how the province is supporting that project. Jason Nixon, the Minister of Seniors, Community and Social Services, will join us to chat about the latest for seniors and housing in Alberta. And finally, the Executive Director of the Premier's Office, Rob Anderson, is going to pop by to chat about what the government has done over the last year and what we can expect going forward. Hi there, and welcome to the Alberta Update, a look at what's happening in your province. I am your host, Bruce McAllister, and the Executive Director of the Premier's Southern Office in Calgary. Well, the date was October 11th, 2022, and recently elected United Conservative leader Danielle Smith was sworn in as the 19th Premier of Alberta with an ambitious plan to put Albertans first. Uh, first, the Premier took the reins, then she announced her new cabinet and got to work immediately. Uh, this week was cause for celebration. As I said, it's officially one year since uh, since taking office. And the Premier, Danielle Smith, joins us to talk about uh, the last year this morning. Good day, Premier. Hi, Bruce. I can't believe it's been a year. My goodness, it's been packed. It feels like two years crammed into one. <laughs> yeah, it uh, it has flown by on one hand, and on the other hand, you've you've accomplished so much. Let's talk about some of those things. Uh, lots of changes in learning over the last twelve months, for sure. Uh, what would you say has been the biggest highlight, or maybe even touch on a few of the accomplishments you're most proud of? There really are so many as we were going through looking at the things we'd accomplished in the last year. I think it turned into a three page press release, but. One thing I would say that I wanted to bring is some stability to the party. There had been a lot of division. There had been, uh, I think, uh, spilling out into the media. I think people were worried that we wouldn't be able to stay together as a team because we we do have a lot of different viewpoints uh, represented in our caucus. And so I've just been so delighted that everybody has come together and that we're pu pulling in the same direction. And I think part of it is honoring the legacy of the first term because there were so many great things that happened that I've been able to carry on. The focus on bringing new people here through the Alberta's Calling Campaign, the um, investment climate that we've created that has resulted in multi-billion dollar deals. We've built on that with an agri-food tax credit. We'll be doing more of that. We've created stability with the fuel tax reprieve, and we've sent a signal to the to the, to, uh, the business community that we're not going to keep on increasing taxes. We created a, a balanced budget framework that allows us to manage surpluses. And uh, then we've also done some new things. I, I knew that one of, the th one of the things I wanted to accomplish is to really reform healthcare in a way that was paid patient focus and created a better environment and more choices for workers on the front line who I think have really had a very tough time and are, have, been, have been under a lot of stress over the last number of years. So we've started that reform and are beginning to see some real progress. And I'll just say one more thing that I've been so pleased to see as well is that the, the 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 caucus in our party have have really come around the idea of, of how we can be a leader on the energy front and still have dramatic re emissions reductions. And this is one of the big battles that we're facing with Ottawa right now, is we're going to do things our way. We're going to do things the Alberta way, which is going to be the right way. And I, th I think that that's, uh, that's a battle that we have to fight, and it's one that we have to win. There's, there's many more things. I should just put one more in, because... One thing that that um, I was really hopeful that we could do is we could begin the process of bringing some digitization to government so that we could do better service delivery. And we created a new uh, a new department of technology and innovation led by Nate Glubish. And you can I can tell you major projects that are underway that are going to make a big difference in the lives of people. For instance, the affordability payments. They engineered a, a web portal so that people could get hundred sign up and get hundred dollar checks to help them through the first six months of this year, and they were able to do that in two months. And then, of course, when the devastating fires hit, we had to support thirty five thousand people with emergency payments who were displaced from their homes, and they managed to put that online within a week. And then the the tragedy that happened with the E. coli outbreak, we needed to bring in, in some compassionate payments to help those parents who had to uh, find emergency childcare as they were taking care of their little one at home. And that they were able to put that together in a week. So whether it's land titles or whether it's other fr front facing services, those are the things that I think people are going to be transformational. And we've just gotten started. It's very exciting. 
It's uh, it's an ambitious agenda. Boy, you covered a lot of ground. Let me follow up on a few of those things. I'd like to start with health care, if I could, Premier. Mm-hmm. Clearly, you ran on a commitment to improve the system for Albertans. Uh, are you pleased with, with the progress that you've made uh, to this point that the government has made on this file? We, we certainly have managed to identify where the where the bottlenecks are. We wanted to fix the patient flow so that when an ambulance arrived, it could, it, they could drop off patients. The patients could be triaged and seen and treated or uh, admitted for hospital treatment. And we also wanted to start clearing off the backlog. And so we've opened up chartered surgical centers, which are now doing 60,000 of our 300,000 surgeries. We're whittling away at that at that list. We've seen some improvement in the, um, in the emergency room wait times and some improvement by a allowing more, more paramedics to drop and go and get back out onto the street. But uh, I have to tell you, we need more to do more work here. And so Adriana LaGrange is just the perfect health minister to be taking this on. I don't want to scoop some of the announcements she's going to be making, but we'll be making some, some significant announcements in the coming weeks. Look forward to it. Listen, fiscally, you have, uh, you have charted a new path forward. Uh, this includes significant investment. It includes debt reduction and a commitment to savings. Are you happy with the road that you have us on and your government has us on financially? Well, I must tell you, one of uh, one of the I think the biggest successes that we had, and you won't really realize it for another decade, is putting in the fiscal framework that we did uh, with uh, Travis Taves as our finance minister. We've limited year over year spending growth on operations, so it has to be below inflation plus population growth. And then we've created a plan for surpluses where half of them have to be used to pay down debt. And then the other half can be used for debt repayment, putting into savings, or one-time spending that doesn't increase operations. And when you look at what happened last year, we put $13 billion down on the debt, which saved hundreds of millions of dollars in interest charges that now can be put towards meaningful projects that Albertans care about. We also added $2 billion to the Heritage Savings Trust Fund. And we're keeping the investment income of that fund so it can continue to grow. And then we'll also be in a position to start making some one-time uh, spending announcements on shovel-ready projects that are, are going to have, I think, a significant impact in communities. That, but what I'm hoping to do, and I've already conveyed this to the municipalities, is that we want to work on addressing how we're going to build more attainable housing for people. Everybody in this province should have the dream of home ownership should be within reach. And one of the biggest barriers is getting enough homes built. So we want to be supportive of municipalities that as they start building out and developing projects to build new sub- new suburbs, we want to be there to support them with schools and hospitals and the transportation infrastructure to be able to support that. So I think that we've created a structure that allows for all of that, allows us to manage growth pressures, but still have a pathway to pay down debt, ultimately pay it off. I can see a plan for us to be debt-free one day, as well as uh, shore up our, our Heritage Savings Trust Fund. It would be just a miracle if it was $100 billion one day generating enough income to, to uh, replace our reliance on resource revenue. And I think we're on that track now. Listen, with a new mandate from Albertans, what would you say your main focus will be? And I guess you've touched on it some in in a couple of your answers, but going forward, what can Albertans look forward to? I think we're in the middle of a major transformation of our economy and our oil and natural gas sector is going to be at the helm of it. Uh, I think that there has been this attitude from Ottawa that they want to phase out the oil and natural gas industry. And we've been saying, no way, we're going to phase out emissions. We're not phasing out this industry. In fact, this industry is going to be developing carbon capture utilization and storage technology. We'll be doing LNG export to reduce emissions globally. We'll be looking at ways that we can use CO2 for different projects like Heidelberg's net zero cement plant, where they're embedding the the uh, the the, uh, the CO2 into cement to make stronger concrete. We're going to, to as well develop a hydrogen economy. We've already received recognition for geothermal development. One of our companies received recognition in Germany. We've got a critical minerals development strategy so that we can develop all the critical minerals that are needed for the new economy as well, and and so much more. And so I feel so excited about what we're on the cusp of, but we have to make sure that the federal government stays in its lane. The federal government has been putting forward uh, policies and, that are clearly outside their constitutional authority, and, and we're prepared to fight back. I, I mean, we'll find out tomorrow when the uh, decision comes down on Bill C-69, which has been known as the No More Pipelines Bill. But the, the, that, that act gave the federal government 
the the authority to approve projects even within Alberta that should have and previously had been solely under our purview. So I'll be hoping that we we get a victory of of sorts tomorrow so that we can begin to really push back against Ottawa because I I believe the constitution matters. And when they say that we have the right to develop our resources, the right to develop our electricity, they did that mindfully and for good reason because it's provincial levels of government that know best about how to manage how to manage the resources and also make sure that they're balancing the economy and increasingly um, ensuring that First Nations are part of that economic reconciliation. I should have mentioned that too, like the Alberta, the Alberta Indigenous Opportunities Corporation, which was uh, pioneered in the previous administration, we've carried on and we've doubled. It's been such a success. So, so much so that Enbridge just recently wrote a pen to column saying that the federal government should do the same thing. I personally think all the provinces should do the same thing. And that to me is, a, is part of the reason why uh, provinces are so strong is that because we can each do and, and, and incubate and develop different ideas that be, and the ones that work are ones that can be shared across the entire country. So we've got to make sure that provinces stay strong. All right, Premier, one more question. Um, uh, look, it's been a busy year. So I would ask you personally, um, how are you doing? I mean, I, I see your schedule on a daily basis. It is uh, it is a load, um, but <laughs> nobody uh, nobody seems to handle it better. How have you been over the last year? <laughs> Well, you know, we lost our puppy. We had a, a, a yeah. Chesapeake Bay Retriever who was 11 years old, who was such a great friend to us. We still have our 16-year-old Labradoodle. Like, he just keeps on ticking, and he's such great company. But I, I when I talked to Rick Bell, I, I told him, you know, notwithstanding how bold I am in, in policy and politics, I'm actually pretty boring in my personal life. But the thing I love to do is just hang out with my husband or some of our dear friends either having dinner or going to the local pub to have some wings and some beer and walking the dogs on the weekend. <laughs> That's the way I unwind. And fortunately, I've started running again too. So I, I had a little bit of a reprieve from that, but that also helps clear the mind. I've got a treadmill. So pop on the headphones, watch some Netflix and manage to get a, a few miles in most, most days of the week. Yeah, listen, your your physical health is important when any when you go as hard as you do. We, we appreciate you making some time for us today. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Premier. Thanks, Bruce. All right. There's Premier Daniel Smith joining us today. Again, a year uh, of her government. And uh, we're going to touch more on this as we as we continue with the Alberta update. But first, some other news. The Premier cut the ribbon on uh, on a new pipeline here in Alberta recently. Kiera's 575-kilometer-long CAPS pipeline will transport natural gas liquids to their facilities in Alberta's industrial heartland uh, near Fort Saskatchewan. Here is a look at that announcement. I think this is really a great day for the whole province. Here in Alberta, we have a vision for the future, and it's a future in which Albertans, Canadians, and the world are able to bring their ingenuity and their problem-solving to market to help build a strong economy and to help create jobs and to help bring energy security to the world. World. And today we get to celebrate a truly fantastic milestone in our energy industry. Congratulations to Kiera and all the hardworking folks who built this system and the Indigenous communities involved in CAPS agreements. The CAPS system means more good jobs in Alberta's industrial heartland and more dependable revenues for Indigenous partners. It's a fantastic example of how the province's energy sector works with leading edge technology, broad partnerships, opportunities for everyone, and real progress on economic reconciliation. So thanks to Kiera and everyone else who's joined in making CAPS a system a reality. And thanks to your work, the future that we all want is just a little bit closer today. Thanks again. Some very exciting news for Calgary Flames fans as the deal for a new Flames arena is officially moving forward. Now, this is, of course, good news for the fans of the Flames, but it is about much more than that. This project will help support and revitalize downtown Calgary. Alberta's government will be investing up to $330 million. Here's a clip from Calgary City Councilor Sonia Sharp on some of the impact this will have on the city's downtown. This is an important investment in our local economy, our downtown recovery, and our future. It will create over 4,700 full-time jobs during the construction phase, with an additional 1,500 permanent jobs when the project is complete. And joining us now to talk more about this is the Minister of Transportation and Economic Corridors, and that is Devin Dreeshen. Good day, Mr. Dreeshen. Thanks for taking some time. Thank you, Bruce, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Minister, this is being received very well, of course. Many saying it's long, it's long overdue, but $330 million is a lot of money. What exactly is the province putting the funding toward? 
So it's a major transportation project for with this 330 million. A lot of it goes in the 6th Street underpass. So there's a, a rail bridge that will be right. over top in downtown Calgary. That's over $100 million of that 330 million. There's also a $30 million new public community rink that'll be attached to the new home of the Calgary Flames. And, uh, and also the, the demolition of the Saddle Dome. And that'll be a, a tough day for, for not just Calgarians, but all of Albertans. Obviously, having the, the Olympics hosted there, it's been the home of the Flames since the 80s. So it's, uh, it'll be a tough day for, for Albertans, but you know, a major transportation project and a, a huge deal with the city of Calgary and the Flames to really revitalize this part of Calgary. Well, listen, uh, we shouldn't we shouldn't uh, delve into into hockey, but maybe we should. The the Flames were the good start to their season. The Oilers, not so much. For those of us that cheer for the Flames, uh, it was good news. Although uh, this caucus and cabinet is mostly Oiler fans, so maybe we should move on from it. Hey, revitalizing Calgary's downtown is a big part of this project, isn't it? How how will this reshape the city? Yeah, I'm, I'm an Oilers fan, so all of this is really tough for me. I knew that. But, uh, <laughs> but no, uh, from Minnesota, Silver Lake, so it's uh, in between Edmonton and Calgary. My, my family split, the constituency split on, on Flames and Oilers. But no, this is a, a huge, you know, to revitalize this part of, of downtown is, is so important. And there'll be, you know, new shops, new retail, new hotels, you know, mixed use development in this area. And obviously our, our downtown cores in both Edmonton and Calgary, we want to make sure that, that they're thriving and that people are attracted and want to live there and and feel safe in these areas. So this will be a completely, the new Rivers District in Calgary will be a completely new community and uh, just really looking forward to uh, the development of it. And it should take just a few years to uh, to get all this zoning done through the city and uh, construction started and finished. Boy, a lot, so many people talking about it. It's it's huge. We've we've seen the transformation of Edmonton and uh, and what happened there when they got their new barn. Listen, housing is a is a topic on many people's minds, and we're we're seeing a big crunch in Alberta. It's uh, it's a catch twenty two problem, isn't it? Uh, so many people moving here, uh, but we have to find a place to house them. Uh, will this project include uh, Minister more more apartments, more condos, more housing for Albertans? Yeah, uh, 8,000 new uh, residents will be able to call this area of downtown home uh, when construction is done. And uh, and you're absolutely right with uh, net migration, even from other provinces of people moving from other provinces to Alberta because of our, our clean land, our clean air and water, and just the, the fact that we have low taxes and just a huge destination for, for so many Canadians and people around the world uh, to you know raise a family and, and run a business here in the province. It's, it's a great problem to have uh, to be able to make sure that we have enough housing for people wanting to move into our province but uh, there'll there'll be a lot of a lot of residents uh, that'll be moving into this area uh, with this new development so pretty pretty exciting day for for calgarians you bet it is minister thanks for taking some time to talk to us take care Thank you, Bruce. Take care. Minister of Transportation and Economic Corridor, uh, Corridor Stephen Dreeshen, joining us on the program. Uh, well, the potential for an Alberta pension plan continues to be a big conversation in Alberta. A report commissioned by the government suggests that there could be great benefits for Albertans if we were to pull out of the Canadian pension plan and start our own Alberta pension plan. Uh, this would only happen, however, if the uh, if the majority of Albertans support the idea. Here's a look at uh, some of the details of the proposed plan and how you can have your say. Alberta's government is exploring a new possibility, an Alberta Pension Plan, or APP for short. You might be wondering, what's in it for you? You see, in 2020, Alberta's government commissioned LifeWorks, an independent third-party consultant, to review the potential for an Alberta Pension Plan. Their analysis found many benefits for Albertans. That's because Alberta's young working population and more jobs with higher wages has resulted in Albertans over-contributing tens of billions into the CPP compared to the benefits we've received. This means that Albertans could save over $5 billion in just the first year if we moved from the CPP to an Alberta pension plan. These savings could increase each senior's monthly pension payment or even provide a large bonus payment for seniors at retirement. Or, these savings could be used to save Alberta workers up to $1,425 in payroll deductions every year. And if you're a business owner, small, medium, or large, an APP could reduce the premiums you pay each year by up to $1,425 per employee. Along with more money in your pocket, an APP would be more stable than the current CPP, 
An asset transfer of over $300 billion from the CPP to an APP would mean a more secure pension for Albertans. And agreements would be developed to allow Albertans to move throughout Canada without impacting their pension benefits. To be clear, there will be no move to an Alberta pension plan unless Albertans approve it in a referendum. It's your pension, your choice. So learn more and have your say at albertapensionplan.ca. The Minister for Seniors, Community and Social Services made a big announcement this week. Uh, Minister Nixon announcing some significant funding for seniors, and he joins us now to chat more about it, along with some other things. Minister, good to see you as always. Thanks for taking the time. Well, great to see you, Bruce. Thanks for having me on. Let's start with the announcement this week. Uh, Tell us about the impact and, uh, and what your government has planned. Well, I was excited yesterday to be in Calgary and announced uh, several million dollars to go to Healthy Aging to be used for a grant uh, through uh, Healthy Aging Alberta, which is going to be able to help seniors remain in their homes. You know, seniors lodging and seniors housing is a big part of our affordable housing file here in Alberta. About 25% of that file is actually seniors housing, senior independent apartments. And about 18% of it is lodges. But we do know that long term, uh, we can't build lodges for all of our seniors. And that we're hearing very clearly from seniors in Alberta that they want to remain in their communities for as long as possible. Uh, And that's something that we certainly want for our communities because it makes our communities more healthy. So with these grants are going to go towards simple things, simple things like helping with snow removal, helping seniors who have lost licenses be able to get groceries in their communities. Um, and that type of uh, components that, you know, we, we take for granted until we're at that point where we can't accomplish that. But what ultimately what this will do is keep seniors in their own homes and the communities that they built for as long as possible, which is a big commitment of our government and going to be a major focus uh, for us over the next several years. Terrific. Minister, while you're with us, let's chat a little bit about the housing situation. You, you no doubt heard me discuss it uh, with Minister Dreeshen. Uh, we have a shortage, of course, uh, partly because so many people are moving here and make Alberta their home. Uh, what is your government, what is your ministry doing to address it? Well, look, housing is one of the highest priorities for the government. It's one of the biggest uh, challenges that we face across the country. It's been driven by a ba- bad federal policies primarily and have created inflation and other challenges. But we're, we're up to the task. And so, right, first off, we're investing $9 billion over between now and 2031 between us and our partners to create another 25,000 units of affordable housing across the province. Uh, we're also bringing in measures and looking at ways to use land different, removing red tape, um, working with Indigenous communities, uh, working with trades, attracting different trades to move to Alberta, and many, many other components like that to be able to make sure uh, that we can drive a market-based solution that ultimately makes sure that we can have houses for everybody for, for generations to come. And uh, as I've heard the Premier say multiple times, uh, Alberta will not give up on the dream of home ownership. So we're going to focus on creating the affordable housing side of the file, but also, Bruce, making sure that we are doing what we can to make sure that uh, all Albertans and my kids and your kids and my grandkids and your grandkids can afford to buy a house in Alberta. Listen, this is one of those areas that requires commitment from all three levels of, of government. You just mentioned it. Ottawa's contribution. What has it been to the solution? Uh, <coughs> excuse me, Minister. Uh, maybe comment on that and any message you would have for municipal governments as we work together to try and to try and work on this crisis, really. Well, well, Ottawa has completely failed on this, particularly when it comes to Alberta. They've invested almost no money here. Uh, CMHC, so the mortgage insurance money that is usually used for these type of issues, they've been spending it in Ontario to buy votes on the backs of Albertans. That doesn't probably surprise any of your viewers, Bruce. We see that throughout government. It's outrageous. Me and all of the major mayors in this province have called for per capita funding on this issue, and we're going to continue to push back on that. But the number one thing we need Ottawa to do is stop doing more harm. We see Justin Trudeau and his federal liberal government continue to bring forward policies that are creating this housing crisis and particularly the inflation crisis. So we need them to stop with bad environmental policy uh, and get focused on making sure that Canada is a great place to do work and that Canadians all have homes. Um, sadly, I'm not that uh, confident that we'll see the prime minister do that, but that's what they should do. On the municipal side, we we need our municipal partners to work closely with us to be able to make sure that we can build all the homes that we're trying to build. It's not enough just to bring money to the table. We need to make a regulatory system, approve zoning, approve bylaws that are going to not hold up housing. And we've seen some action from Calgary and Edmonton, in particular in the last couple of weeks, that I think is promising. But our message, uh, the Premier and I's message on this issue to all municipalities is the time for blocking projects is over. We need to build houses, hundreds of thousands of houses. 
Uh, and we're going to do what it takes to be able to make sure red tape's out of the way. And again, so we can make sure that the dream home ownership is not gone in this great province. You bet. Listen, uh, it's music to the ears of most Albertans, I think. Let free enterprise reign. Let choice and competition uh, rule the marketplace. And let's provide some housing options. Minister, thanks for your work on this file. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks. Here's Minister Jason Nixon joining us today. Well, we spoke to the Premier about this uh, just a minute ago. The one-year anniversary of her government is this week. One of the people working hard behind the scenes on behalf of Albertans is the Executive Director of the Premier's Office. That is Rob Anderson. And Rob joins us uh, to discuss, I guess, the year in review today. Rob, thank you. Good to see you. Thanks for taking some time. Good to see you, Bruce. Thanks for having me. Listen, it's been a year, and uh, the Premier outlined some of the highlights and some of the things that you've been focusing on. <clears throat> she talked a lot about some of the uh, the accomplishments. <clears throat> Excuse me, a frog in my throat today. You have been you have been uh, with the Premier throughout the campaign, of course, through the transition. Uh, you're you're a big part of the team working on the Premier's agenda on behalf of Albertans. From your standpoint, Rob, maybe reflect on the last year. Well, it's been a wild uh, whirlwind, actually. Um, over the last year, but it's uh, it's worked out uh, really well. Obviously, uh, I've just been amazed by the ability of this premier to take on um, basically anything uh, that has been thrown uh, at her. I mean, we had a we had a very uh, hotly contested uh, leadership uh, election, um, mm -hmm. and uh, with some phenomenal candidates across the board, it was very hotly contested. And she was able to first bring the caucus and and that leadership team together uh, in her cabinet and in her caucus in, in a very productive way, uh, where um, you know there was just a, an amazing amount of, of uh, team building that went on, and uh, and just uh, and that I think was critical to uh, to getting so much uh, policy work done. Over, For over sure. That. Listen, uh, you said it, but I, I, I just want to follow up on it. It has been a whirlwind, uh, but the premier and her caucus and her cabinet have an ambitious plan, uh, the mandate from Albertans. Maybe comment uh, more on the financial turnaround, Rob, where we are today and where we were just a few years ago. Oh, I mean, if you remember, I mean, we were we were looking down the barrel of $100 billion debt, um, mm -hmm. you know, tens and tens of billions of dollars of deficit each year. It was a mess. And uh, a lot of uh, praise should be given to uh, former Finance Minister Travis Taves and, of course, uh, Premier Smith for bringing in the fiscal framework, um, uh, making sure that the, the work was done on that to ensure that going forward, we're paying down that debt. We've paid down $13 billion last year. There will likely be more paid down this year coming up, hopefully. Um, obviously, more savings, $2 billion invested in the Heritage Savings Fund. The idea there is to grow the savings fund to, to eventually where we don't need to rely on natural resource revenue to, to, to make ends meet in the budget. And, uh, and then just making sure that we control spending, that as, as, we, as we make investments, as the government makes investments, Premier Smith's been very clear, she wants to make sure that we don't get into a habit of um, spending more than inflation plus population growth, because when we do that, we find our, you know, we'll find ourselves right back in debt when we have a few lean years. So these are a great accomplishments in the first year, and uh, it's quite, been quite a financial turnaround, and I really hope to see it uh, continue. Rob, listen, Ottawa has certainly provided its, uh, its share of challenges, hasn't it? Obviously, it's, it's positioned toward our oil and gas industry, toward the electricity grid, and some of the unrealistic expectations. Maybe, maybe comment on the challenges of working with the federal government and this government's commitment to stand up for Albertans. Well, obviously, I mean, that started uh, right off the hop with the passage of the Sovereignty Within the United Canada Act. Um, it's just, it's been so uh, important to this premier to make sure that Ottawa understands that we are going to protect our provincial uh, areas of jurisdiction uh, to develop our natural resources, to, to generate electricity, uh, you know, to, to oversee our lands and, and our agriculture and so forth. These are, these are critical to Alberta's success, to our economic viability as a province. And she did not want to, she wanted to make sure that Ottawa could not erode those things away. So, I mean, obviously there's lots of uh, moving parts right now, but one thing is for sure, this premier has the tools that she needs, and more importantly, the will uh, that is needed uh, to stand up to, um, to the folks in Ottawa who just uh, don't, uh, don't seem to want to abide by the, by the constitution.
Listen, uh, I, I know how hard you're working behind the scenes, and uh, on behalf of Albertans, thank you for that. Appreciate the time, and uh, uh, enjoy it, and uh, keep up the good work. Thanks, Bruce. Take care. There's Rob Anderson. Rob is the Executive Director of the Premier's Office here in Alberta. Well, great news this week for hardworking Alberta parents. The United Conservative Government is expanding Alberta's space creation grant to provide child care centers, uh, which will help create over 22,000 22,000 new child care spaces here in Alberta. The $28 million uh, project will focus on uh, making new licensed spaces in high need and in high demand communities. Children and Family Services Minister Cyril Turton says, uh, says including private operators ensures that Alberta parents have choices when it comes to selecting the child care option that works best for their family. Parents who are challenged to find accessible and affordable child care right now will be happy to know that funding will focus on creating new spaces in communities where they are needed the most. And the grant will help us meet our overall commitment to create over 60,700 new affordable licensed spaces by 2026. More families than ever will see their options expand and their fees go down. We believe that promoting a mixed market approach, as endorsed by our minister and current government, is the right step forward for the future of Alberta's childcare. Now, we should point out this funding will also bring Alberta closer to achieving its goal of an average of $10 per day child care by 2026. And that does it for the Alberta Update this week. A look at what's happening with your government and uh, and some interviews with, obviously, the government uh, that you have elected. And, and we, we hear about the work they're doing behind the scenes on your behalf. Uh, we plan to do these updates weekly when the legislature is sitting, every other week when it is not. You can always view this update on, uh, on your Alberta YouTube page or the premiers at AB Danielle Smith. And make sure to subscribe to the Alberta Update on YouTube as well. Just go to YouTube.com. Com, open the app and search your Alberta or AB Danielle Smith, then hit the subscribe button. It is just that easy. Thank you for sharing some time with us today, and we hope to see you again next time. Mm -hmm.